WWF backlash took place on April 25th, 1999 in Providence, Rhode Island. Just under 11,000 fans are at the Providence Civic Center while an estimated 400,000 fans bought the show on pay-per-view. Our main event, a WrestleMania rematch as Stone Cold Steve Austin defends his WWF title against The Rock. There's a second WrestleMania rematch on the card as Mankind and The Big Show Paul White continue their rivalry, and we'll also see the aftermath of the D-Generation X fallout as former stablemates X-Pac and Triple H go one-on-one. -on -one. Jim Ross, who's back on WWF pay-per-view for the first time since Capital Carnage 98, informs us that the main event for the WWF Championship will now be a no holds barred match by decree of special referee Shane McMahon. Shane O'Max also ruled that if Austin lays a hand on him, the Rattlesnake will lose his WWF title. So once again, the corporation stacks the deck against Stone Cold. Let's see if the inaugural Backlash pay-per-view can right the wrongs of a lackluster WrestleMania from the previous month. We kick things off with a six-man tag team match pitting the Ministry of Darkness against The Brood. Despite helping the leader of the Ministry commit murder just last month, The Brood are no longer affiliated with The Undertaker's faction. This was due to Christian's treatment after he revealed the location of Stephanie McMahon a few weeks ago on Raw. The Ministry is represented by the trio of the Acolytes and Midian, and our spooky six-man slugfest kicks off with Midian and Christian having a staring contest as they lie on the mat before the former hog farmer takes the early advantage. Christian gets his head bounced off the turnbuckle before getting choked, but he's able to use his quickness to drop Midian with a spinning wheel kick before applying an armbar. Gangrel gets tagged in and he keeps the pressure on with a wrist lock, but Midian's able to tag out following a thumb to the eye and a headbutt. Big Bradshaw gets kicked while going for a backdrop, but because he's such a double hard bastard, he no-sells it before delivering a big boot which floors Gangrel. Bradshaw goes to work in the corner with some stiff shots, but he gets stopped in his tracks by our vampiric friend and his second rope back elbow. This doesn't keep Bradshaw down for long as he scores with a fallaway slam, but he does fall victim to edging Gangrel's double teaming following a blind tag. Karma is very quick these days as Edge suffers the same fate almost immediately as the Acolytes go to work. Edge attempts a crucifix, which is quite apt when you think about it, and he connects with it following some assistance from Christian, but it only gets a two count. Edge then hits a spinning wheel kick, but he gets stopped in his tracks via a spine buster from Farouk. The Ministry continue to punish Edge both in and outside the ring, distracting both the referee and the other members of the brood to keep the advantage. Despite him being on the apron at the time, a loud Midian sucks chant breaks out, which is harsh but not untrue. All the while, the Ministry continue to isolate Edge, culminating in a pay-per-view chin lock from Farouk. Good man. Miraculously, Edge is able to fight out of wrestling's most devastating hold with a jawbreaker, but Midian's able to prevent him from tagging in one of his brood teammates. After taking even more punishment, Edge finally gets in some offense as he catches Midian with a boot to the face, which is followed by a spear from the second rope. Finally, he's able to make the tag, and Christian goes to work on Midian with right hands before scoring with a reverse DDT for a near fall. Things begin to break down as all six men make their way into the ring, but the brood get the better of the exchange as both Edge and Christian hit assisted splashes in the corner before Christian connects with a tornado DDT for another two count. Christian and Bradshaw continue to fight in the ring as the other four men brawl on the outside. Christian stays inside the ropes to lay in a few mounted punches in the corner, but that gets snuffed out by a ring shake and powerbomb from Big Bradshaw. Gangrel's just able to break up the resultant cover. The Brood then try to steal it as Ed scores with a missile dropkick which leads to Christian getting another near fall. Christian then finds himself on the outside, and our match comes to an end when Viscera makes an appearance to squash Christian against the ring apron before throwing him back inside for a clothesline from hell. Not a terrible match, especially when it picked up towards the end, but the action slowed down a little too much throughout the middle portion of the match. Still, the Ministry come out on top, which can't make Mr. McMahon all that happy. The Rock shown arriving backstage with Stone Cold Smoking Skull Belt. He clearly doesn't care much for the champion's property as he drags Austin's prized possession along the floor of the Providence Civic Center. Speaking of damaged title belts, the Hardcore Championship set to be defended next as Hardcore Holly defends against Al Snow. These two have been intertwined for quite some time now, metaphorically speaking of course, and they're gonna hook it up once again on pay-per-view with old Sparky Plug's title at stake. Dr. Death Steve Williams was supposed to be involved in this match as he had been involved in the rivalry between Snow and Holly over these past few weeks, but he was taken off TV in mid-April to rehab an injury. 
Say what you want about Al Snow, but he's proven to be one of the most overacts in the company for quite some time now, as evidenced by the ovation he gets as he and Head make their way down to the ring. Al's desperate to win the hardcore title, so Bastard Bob gets Al's face acquainted with the gold as he smacks him with it in the head. Al's actual head, not… never mind. Despite an early flurry of offense, Bob gets sent over the top rope to the floor and Al goes on the attack. This doesn't last too long though as Al gets sent flying into the ring steps. Bobo then goes under the ring and he pulls out a jug of water. I mean, there's like tables and candlesticks under there, but whatever. He bops Al in the noggin with that big old jug, so he made the right choice it seems. I guess that's why he's hardcore champion and I'm not. Al's been busted wide open, presumably from the belt shot at the beginning of the match, as the two fight over the barricade and into the crowd. Al's able to get the advantage out amongst the people of Providence as the two brawl back over the security rail to the ringside. Al then delivers a slam on the floor before scoring with a moonsault off the barricade which gets him a 2. Snow goes under the ring to look for a weapon and he pulls out a hockey stick, that's a bit more like it. Bob gets whacked a few times before Al once again shows off his stick twirling abilities before proceeding to smack Holly repeatedly with the remains of said hockey stick. Al goes under the ring again and he pulls out a table. Remember what happened last time you did this on pay per view, good sir. Bob joins Al on the outside and he's met with a bacon tray to the head before the two fight up the entranceway where the hardcore champion hits a suplex on the concrete floor. The two continue their brawl all the way to the backstage area as is tradition at this point for these hardcore matches and Bob grabs a kitchen sink. Now, I know it's just to get the hitting each other with everything including the kitchen sink line, but I have so many questions. Why is there just a random sink backstage? Who does it belong to? Is it a top mount sink or an undermount sink? I really need to know. Anyway, I don't get a chance to find out the answers to any of these hard pressing questions as Al sprays Bob with a hose and the sink smashes on the ground. The two then take turns throwing each other into some poor bastard's car before Al finds a broom which he breaks over the back of the champion. The fight then goes up a staircase next to some dumpsters and Al finds himself getting thrown into said dumpsters before Bob joins him. Not really doing the stereotype garbage wrestling thing any favours here, but that is proper disgusting lads, get out of there and get a wash. The two then make their way inside a production truck before Bob gets thrown from the truck onto the roof of a car below, and Al then drops an elbow but he only gets a two. In fairness, that bump that Bob took looked like it hurt a lot. After stopping off at a few more parts of the backstage area, the two finally make their way down to ringside where Al grabs a couple of frying pans and he cracks Holly over the head. Al then places Bombastic Bob on the table from earlier and he climbs to the top rope, but Bob puts a stop to that nonsense and Al gets crotched. Remember that old wrestling adage that he who sets it up must go through it? Well, that's the case as Bob delivers a massive superplex to Al through the table. After the two men catch their breath on the mat for a minute, Al's able to crawl over the head and smack Bob right in the head with head. Just stay with me here, before making the cover and picking up the win. We have a new hardcore champion here tonight at Backlash and yeah, a fun and silly encounter with some unique spots that hadn't been seen in these matches up until this point. The spots help this one stand out against a lot of the hardcore matches the WWF were producing around this time, although it maybe was a little too long at over 15 minutes. The Undertaker's gathered his ministry backstage. He says that tonight's victory has gone some way to make up some members' recent failings and now they can look to the future and the arrival of the Hauer Hauer Power. <laughs> prepare for the eventual arrival of our higher power. For now though, the destruction and the tragedy shall begin tonight at Backlash. Next up is our second title match of the evening as Godfather defends the Intercontinental title against Goldust. Was this the tragedy that The Undertaker was talking about? The IC title has been hot potatoed quite a bit recently, changing three times in the last month with The Godfather picking up the gold on the April 12th edition of Raw. He defeated Goldust for the belt, who himself only had a two week reign, and now the bizarre one has his rematch to attempt to reclaim the championship. Goldust makes his way to the ring accompanied by the Blue Mini who cuts his version of Sable's signature promo before treating us all to the grind, my word. The Godfather brings his ladies of the night down to the ring with him, much to the delight of fans in attendance. He tells the audience that it's once again time for everybody to come aboard the whole train, and he reminds us all that maintaining a franchise of ladies to carry out after hours activities is not quite as simple as we all may perceive. 
He tells Goldust that there will be no hoes for him as they apparently, and I quote, don't like scrubs, much to the annoyance of our golden friend. Goldust, clearly attempting to prove that he is in fact not a scrub, attacks the IC champion from behind but it backfires as the Godfather delivers a backdrop and a couple of clotheslines before Goldust seeks the sanctuary of the ring ropes. However, when the challenger tries to deliver a backdrop of his own, he ends up getting his face driven into the canvas before getting thrown over the top rope and out to the floor. Meany tends to his uh, mummy who then decides that he's had enough and he wants to leave. That is until Meany reminds him that this match is for the Intercontinental title. Goldust gets back in the ring but he's met with a scoop slam and a leg drop. Meany's able to grab the Godfather's foot however and the challenger sends the champion over the top rope to the floor with a clothesline to the back. This allows that no good blue Meany to lay in a few cheap shots. Back in the ring, Goldust scores with a leaping clothesline for a two count before he decides to choke the Godfather on the middle rope. Meany must have gotten his hands on Shawn Michaels' fanny pack earlier in the day as he hands Goldust a bag of powder before distracting the referee. Heel buffoonery ensues though as Godfather sends the powder flying into Goldust's eyes. In his blinded state, Goldust attacks Meany while thinking he's going after Godfather, culminating in the blue one getting his dream shattered. It's a blind kick to the dick ladies and gents. Godfather hits Goldust with a sidekick before going for a pin. The meanie inadvertently hits Goldust right in his golden globes while attempting to break up the pinfall and the Godfather sends Meany into Goldust before delivering a hoe train to both his adversaries. The IC champ then hits a pimp drop for the pin and the win, therefore retaining his intercontinental gold. A very short encounter for the IC title but it was thoroughly entertaining for the crowd inside the Civic Center. Michael Cole grabs a word with the new hardcore champion who tells uh, Todd that his victory tonight was a long time coming. However, Head seems to think differently as when Al covered Holly, technically Head was the one on top of Sparky Plug. Therefore, in Head's mind, Head is in fact the hardcore champion. Before this domestic dispute can rage on further, we go back to the ring for our next matchup. The New Age Outlaws take on Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett with the winners earning themselves a shot at the tag team titles. Deborah looks, uh, yeah, she's extra revealing tonight, let's put it that way. In all seriousness though, it must have been difficult for her to be told that she was going to have to go out in front of a live audience with thousands watching around the world on TV in little more than her underwear, so fair play to her. I know I couldn't do it, but I don't get that many offers. Even Road Dogg's aware of this fact as he encourages Deborah to show her puppies. But Jared and Owen intervene, much to the annoyance of the crowd, and the outlaws get jumped to start the match off. The bout eventually settles down to a one-on-one -on -one situation as Billy and Owen square off as the legal man. Owen takes the early advantage by bouncing Billy's head off the top turnbuckle, but Mr. Ass turns the tables with a dropkick and a military press slam. Road Dogg tags in and we see a dancey kick, yeah let's go with that. Owen takes Road Dogg down with a neckbreaker before tagging in his partner and Jared hits a neckbreaker of his own. JEFF then scores with a leapfrog body guillotine before strutting away in celebration. The fans are way more interested in Deborah as they chant show your puppies, yeah, bring back the attitude era right guys. In the meantime Rody connects with his dancey punch and dancey knee. Some miscommunication allows the outlaws to connect with a pair of drop kicks but a distraction from double J on the outside allows Owen to drop Mr. Dog with an enziguri. Rody then takes a double clothesline and I have a sneaking suspicion we're about to fall into the regular Outlaws tag team match formula. Another dropkick sends Road Dog through the ropes to the outside but Billy's there to prevent his partner taking any further damage from Owen. Back inside the ring, Rody gets choked out on the middle ropes before Jeff looks for a second leapfrog body guillotine but it backfires and Jarrett injures his BA double L's. Luckily for him though, Owen's there to drop Rody with a clothesline from the apron before tagging in. Road Dog's able to cover Owen but Jeff has the referee distracted. This allows Owen to regain control with a jumping leg lariat. Jarrett comes back in and he hits a par slam for a two count but a mid ring collision causes both men to drop to the canvas, all while the fans continue with their request for puppies. Owen gets the tag and prevents Road Dog from doing likewise before locking in a sleeper. Rody's arm drops once, twice but not thrice as he fights his way out before applying one of his own. Owen quickly escapes and both men take each other out with a double clothesline. 
Both men tag out and Billy Gunn's a house on fire as he takes out both his opponents before hitting a beautiful power slam on Jared for an air fall. The outlaws then lay into their opponents with mounted punches before Billy wipes out both himself and Jarrett with a clothesline over the top. Debra distracts Rhodey which allows Owen to take advantage. Road Dog counters and he connects with his pump handled slam but Double J's there to break up the follow up pin attempt. Owen locks in the sharpshooter as Jeff tries to apply the figure 4 but Billy kicks Jeff out of the ring and he breaks Owen's submission hold with a famouser and this is enough for the New Age Outlaws to pick up the win and the number 1 contendership for the tag team titles. As is the case with the Outlaws, you know how their matches are going to go and this one was no different. Although having two tremendous talents in Owen and Jeff did help break up their usually monotonous structure and this made the match a lot more entertaining than many of the Outlaws previous pay per view outings. Michael Cole has a word with Shane McMahon and Cole reiterates the stipulations that are in place for tonight's WWF title match. Michael Cole then asks Shane how can he be an impartial official and if Austin pins Rock tonight, can Shane guarantee that he'll count the fall? Shane says he isn't his father and that he doesn't make guarantees, he's Shane McMahon and he's running the show. He does say that he has something better than a guarantee though, he has his word and he gives his word in the name of his grandfather Vincent James McMahon that he will count the fall should that instance occur. On the subject of Vince, Shane says that he has no father and that Vince should stay out of his way tonight. Kevin Kelly's with Vince who says that while it's surreal that he isn't in charge tonight, he's taking care of his family and that's more important. Stephanie interjects and she says that Shane knows how much Vince's dad meant to him and Shane knows exactly what he was saying when he mentioned Vince Senior's name and Vince finishes things off when he says he knows Shane made a mistake on Raw and that tonight he hopes that Shane doesn't make an even bigger one. Up next we have the boiler room brawl between the big show and mankind. We see the big show making his way to the boiler room and searching for his opponent but Mick's able to get the upper hand while the giant's back was turned. Foley breaks a broom over Big Show's back before slamming a door on the big man but Show grabs Foley by the throat and he throws him repeatedly into a storage locker. Mankind then gets thrown over a table onto the concrete floor before Show picks up that table and he hits Mick right on the head with it. A thumb to the eye gives Mick some momentary respite before he gets thrown into a refrigerator. Show then looks for a big right hand but Foley moves and the big man punches that fridge. Mick then breaks multiple pieces of sheetrock over Big Show's head before looking to do the same with a trash can but Show gets his foot up and kicks the weapon right back in Foley's face. Show then uses that trash can to wallop Mick across the back a few times. He then places Mick inside a shopping trolley and sends him flying into a wooden board and if that wasn't bad enough, Mick then gets slammed on that same board and it looks like there was no give there whatsoever. Mankind gets thrown into another board but this time it falls on top of him and I don't think this one was planned as can be heard from Foley's reaction. Just as the big show's thinking of walking out the door to win the match, he turns around and he's greeted by Mankind smashing a pane of glass over the big show's head. Mick then gets a rickety old ladder and he looks to grab hold of a crane hook but Show grabs Foley around the neck and he choke slams him off the ladder through two tables with panes of glass lying on top of them. As good as this spot looked, Jesus Mick would you ever just calm down. Mankind miraculously makes his way back to his feet only to get a mop broken over his back before falling into yet more glass. Both men are now bleeding as the fight continues on and Mick then gets slammed onto a metal trolley. Show then wheels the trolley into yet more metal and once again Mick goes flying. Foley, in an act of desperation, breaks a pipe that sends steam into the big man's eyes and Mick then takes advantage with a low blow using that pipe. Show got hit in the pipe with a pipe. Mankind throws Big Show onto a table, causing more pipes to fall on the giant. With the Big Show now buried under the metal, Mankind crawls his way towards the door and he makes his way through it, but not before leaving his bloody handprint on the wall. I love it. Mankind wins the match but he's immediately ambushed by Test and the boss man. They throw Mick back into the boiler room and look to do more damage but the big show rises from beneath those pipes and he makes the save for his opponent chasing after the big boss man. Mankind grabs Socko from his tights and he shoves him right down the gullet of Test before crawling away and you know despite this only going around 7 minutes they crammed a lot into that time and I found this one to be a thoroughly entertaining brawl. Putting both guys over is legitimately tough man who could take a lot of punishment. It was a strange booking decision putting these two against each other after Show turned babyface at WrestleMania, but nonetheless, this was a good boiler room brawl.
Michael Cole's backstage with Triple H in China. China berates X-Pac, calling him an ungrateful punk who seems to have forgotten who got him over in the first place. She says there's a pecking order here and it's about time someone put X-Pac in his place. Hunter meanwhile says that he made X-Pac and tonight he's gonna break him. Both China and Triple H turn their back on DX with Hemsley doing so at WrestleMania, leading to Hunter and the Ninth Wonder of the World becoming part of the corporation. Triple H and X-Pac would square off on the March 29th episode of Raw but the match ended in disqualification, so let's see if we can get a decisive winner here tonight at Backlash. One half of the tag team champions is out first but X-Pac looks like he's doing this all alone without his partner. Not only is Hemsley coming out with backup in the form of China, but he's also accompanied by some generic heel rock music as his entrance theme. My time, this certainly is not. I think this one's called Corporate Player and it's a pretty terrible theme in comparison to Hunter's later entrance songs. Triple H gets Pog fired up with a slop to the face and here we go. The two men exchange right hands before Pog drops Hunter with an inverted enziguri, forcing Trips to build to the outside. Pog meets Hunter outside the ring and he drives his former stablemate's head into the ring steps before throwing him back inside the ropes, but Trips catches X Pog with a shot to the midsection and now the former leader of DX takes control. He launches Pog out over the top rope and both X Pog and China exchange words, daring each other to take a shot. Triple H takes advantage by bouncing Pog's head off the announce table and then the ring steps before keeping the advantage back inside the ring. A spinning heel kick from X Pog does garner him a near fall and he follows this up with a spinning back kick in the corner, leaving Triple H in prime position for a Bronco Buster. Pog looks to set up for the move but China grabs his foot, this distracts Waltman long enough for Hunter to regain his bearings and move out of the Bronco Buster attempt. Pog holds his neck as a result of hitting his head on the turnbuckles and Hunter takes full advantage with a clothesline. The referee signals that X Pog's hurt, but Helmsley doesn't care and he continues his attack by dropping repeated elbows on the injured neck. China even gets in on the action as she delivers a shot while X Pog's draped over the middle rope. Hunter lays in more shots to the back of the neck before delivering a swinging neckbreaker for a two count. He then locks in a long front face lock, applying yet more pressure to the neck of X Pac, after which he drops his knee across the injured body part. Hunter then locks in a dragon sleeper as JR berates Hunter for the tactics he's chosen to employ throughout this matchup, all while praising X Pac's heart and resiliency. Pac uses those traits to fight out of the submission, but Triple H quickly regains control with a facebreaker knee smash before once again throwing X Pac out to the floor. Hunter distracts the referee, which allows China to draw Pog over the barricade, and Hunter continues to target the neck when he drapes Pog across the apron and he drives his elbow into it. Back in the ring, X Pog's able to catch Hemsley with an inside cradle, but he gets shut down once again with another clothesline before Hunter goes back to the front face lock before transitioning into a sleeper. The crowd are starting to lose interest in this one, it must be said, but X Pog fights out and he applies a sleeper of his own. Hunter gets out with a back suplex. Both men get to their feet and X Pog fires up with two spinning heel kicks and a jumping clothesline. He then heads up to the second rope and connects with the Tornado DDT, which only gets a two. China then gets up on the apron, but her attempt at interference backfires as Pog counters a pedigree and he scores with a low blow while the referee's back was turned. Pog then gets sent out to the floor again, this time he's able to send trips into the ring steps. He then looks for a baseball slide, but Hunter pulls the referee in the way and Mike Kyoto gets taken out. Back inside the ropes, X Pog scores with the X Factor, but there's no referee to make the count. How convenient. And the lack of a match official allows China to hit X Pog with a low blow and a reverse DDT. Suddenly, the lights go out in the arena and here comes the big red machine Kane, who himself had been double crossed by China in the not too distant past. Triple H gets sent for a ride with a chokeslam from Kane, Kane then sets his sights on China who suffers the same fate, and Kane's interference here has gotten the biggest reaction of the match so far. Kane then sets both Triple H and China in the corner before taking his leave, allowing X Pac to hit a pair of Bronco Busters to his former DX teammates, but unfortunately for Waltman, he turns right into a waiting Triple H who delivers a pedigree for the pin and the win. I took a couple of things from this one. First of all, it was far, far too long. At nearly 20 minutes, this was the longest match on the card. However, we do see the genesis of what Triple H matches would come to be in the near future right here. As for X-Pac, yes he did look valiant in fighting against the odds, but the fact that he couldn't get the win despite Kane's help didn't really do him any favours at all. A perfectly serviceable match, but cutting 5 minutes off it would have made it a lot better.
Our semi-main event features Ken Shamrock vs The Undertaker. Kenny Boy's become Vince McMahon's most trusted disciple as of late, as it was he who was able to locate Vince's daughter Stephanie a few weeks ago on Raw following her abduction by the Ministry. Undertaker then made things personal with Shamrock specifically after he abducted Ken's sister Ryan and he tied her to his symbol, and because Ken didn't get any help throughout all this, the world's most dangerous man decided to leave Team Corporate. Shamrock's made it his mission to break the leg of The Undertaker, so let's see if he can accomplish that goal here tonight at Backlash. He wastes no time taking the fight to the dead man right at the opening bell, but the Phenom shows off his power by tossing Shamrock into the corner by the throat. Taker then drops Shamrock with a clothesline while Paul Bearer berates the referee's count, and the dead man then goes old school on Kenny Boy. Undertaker takes to the air again as he performs his leaping lariat, but Ken avoids a big boot in the corner. The former UFC fighter begins to focus on the Undertaker's leg with a series of kicks before tying his legs up in the ropes. Taker turns it around with a big boot and a back suplex, but Kenny Boy rolls through from a sunset flip and he locks in an E-bar. Shamrock continues to focus on the Undertaker's leg with more kicks and more submissions, and just like the previous match, we have a pretty quiet audience for this one. The Phenom eventually breaks out and he scores with a few strikes of his own. Shamrock blocks a hip toss attempt and he goes right back to work on the leg. After making it to the ropes, Taker rolls to the outside but Shamrock's right there after him. Kenny Boy places the dead man's leg on the ring steps and stomps on the ankle before throwing his opponent back in the ring, where he continues to kick the leg. Kick the leg under your leg. Taker does cause some separation by going to Shamrock's eyes before taking Ken down with a drop toe hold and delivering a number of punches, but once again Shamrock counters and he locks in an armbar. Again, The Undertaker goes to the outside and as Ken looks to attack from the apron, Taker catches him and he drives him into the ring post before introducing Ken's face to the steel steps. The dead man then hits a backbreaker before stretching Ken out across his knee, and then he decides to switch things up with a bow and arrow lock. He then drops a big leg brother, but Shamrock's able to roll through and once again he locks in a leg submission, that is until the dead man counters into a half Boston crab. I do like technical wrestling as much as the next person, but I share the sentiments of the people of Providence right here, and yeah, I want to see some action as this one's been a real slog so far. Ken does try to get the crowd back into it with a Hurricane Rana which he transitions into the ankle lock. This gets quickly broken up and Shamrock gets dropped with a forearm. Taker then picks up Shamrock for a tombstone but Kenny Boy slides down the back and he locks in the ankle lock once again. The dead man's in trouble but here comes Bradshaw with a baseball bat to cause a distraction. Kenny takes the acolyte out but he walks right into the waiting hands of the Undertaker. Taker picks Ken up for a choke slam, but Ken counters into an armbar and yeah, in fairness this did look pretty great. He has to once again release the hole due to a distraction, this time it's from Paul Bear, but Shamrock does connect with the belly to the belly before looking to put Undertaker away with his own tombstone pile driver. However, Taker reverses the momentum and he plants Kenny Boy with his signature move to score the pinfall win. Taker defeats Shamrock at Backlash and I'm not really all that surprised. Following the bout, The Undertaker sets Bradshaw on Ken who delivers a powerbomb before choking Shamrock out with his baseball bat. Uh, this one was rough to get through. I understand that because of Ken's background, the WWF felt compelled to incorporate a little MMA into his ring style, but Ken's shown time and time again that he's capable of so much more than locking in endless leg grip vines and arm bars. Despite these two having one of the more prominent storylines going into this show, they vastly underdelivered to the point where I'd be happy to never see them square off again. A truly dull match right here at Backlash. Main event time as Stone Cold Steve Austin defends his WWF Championship against The Rock in a no holds barred match, with Shane McMahon as the special guest referee. Austin regained the WWF title last month at WrestleMania, but he wasn't happy with carrying around the official WWF Championship belt. Instead, Austin wanted his custom smoking skull belt, a belt which Vince McMahon had stolen from Austin last year at Breakdown in Your House. Vince was so distracted by The Undertaker and the Ministry that he told Shane to just go and give the smoking skull belt back to Austin to save him any more headaches, but Shane decided to go against his father's wishes and instead he gave the belt to the former champion, The Rock. Rocky held the belt hostage, he lured Austin to the Rudy Poo bridge saying that if Stone Cold wants the piece of trash he can come get the piece of trash. The two fought on the bridge, culminating in Austin falling into the water below. Rocky then threw Austin's belt into the river in an act that mirrored what Austin had done to the Rock's Intercontinental belt back in late 1997. 
The next week on Raw, Rocky held a funeral service for the Rattlesnake where he revealed that he still had Austin's custom title belt. In response, Austin turned up to the arena in a monster truck and he proceeded to crush The Rock's brand new car. It's <laughs> so good. Austin would reclaim his stolen property only to have Shane McMahon hit him over the head with a shovel to take the belt right back. So Austin's walking into backlash wanting to reclaim his title as WWF Champion while also reclaiming his custom made title belt. JR reiterates that this will be a no holds barred contest and that if Austin lays a hand on Shane then he will be immediately stripped of the WWF Championship. And before the match we see Vince putting Stephanie into a limo while telling the cops to keep their eyes peeled for The Undertaker. Vince says he'll be right back after this match is concluded. Our special referee makes his way down to the ring first, followed by the challenger who gets an incredible ovation. It shows just how much of a star Rocky was that even something as divisive as the smoke and skull belt still looks good over the shoulder of the great one. Shane tells a crew member to wait until Austin's in the ring before taking the belt to Shane's office, so Austin's belt will not be at ringside throughout the matchup. The crowd goes ballistic as the WWF Champion makes his way down to the ring. They have seriously woken up for this main event match. Austin's carrying the official WWF title belt but he doesn't seem to care for it too much as he launches it at the rock while sprinting down to the ring. The two men start exchanging right hands and here we go, the WWF title main event match is underway. Austin lays in the Rocky in the corner and Shane stops the rattlesnake from doing more damage as he reprimands the champion, a distraction that allows the challenger to take control by dropping Austin with a big right hand. We see our lackey taking the smoking skull belt away just as Austin lands a Luthez press. He fires away with some piston like right hands before he drops a big elbow before making a cover and surprise surprise, Shane McMahon refuses the count. Rocky turns the tide with a swinging neckbreaker before getting in a few shots in the corner that sends Austin up and over the top rope. Rock runs through Austin with a clothesline on the concrete floor before dragging him up towards the side of the entranceway where he throws Austin into the security railing. Rocky then nails the champion with a fire extinguisher before flinging the champion into the entranceway. This causes the set to come crashing down, much to the delight of fans inside the arena. Rocky continues the punishment by raining down more right hands on a prone rattlesnake before looking to deliver a suplex on the floor. Austin turns it around and it's the challenger who crashes on the concrete. Turnabout's fair play it seems, as this time it's Rocky who gets sent into the entrance set and it once again comes tumbling down. Austin then nails Rocky in the head with an anvil case before hitting a clothesline on top of the fallen set and it seems he caught the side of his own head on the edge of the fence. Austin then chokes Rock with a cable before sending him flying into the steam guardrail. The champion then climbs into the tech area and he delivers a clothesline before finding a larger anvil case and wheeling it right into the head of the challenger. Rock counters a double axe handle with a shot to the midsection before repaying the favour by sending that anvil case into Austin. The two then continue to battle around the entranceway before they finally make their way back towards the ring, but not before Austin throws Rock into the ring steps. Back inside the ring, Austin stomps away at Rocky in the corner but once again Shane pulls Austin away and the rattlesnakes becoming a tad frustrated by the actions of our guest referee. He's able to sidestep an oncoming Rock who gets sent flying over the top rope to the floor and he follows this up with a clothesline from the apron. The Spanish announce table then gets torn apart as the two men make their way on top of it. Austin looks for a pile driver but Rocky counters with a low blow and the champ then gets sent crashing through the table with a rock bottom. Rocky then jumps on the Spanish announce table to remind Austin and the viewers at home what his opinion is of the Texas rattlesnake before decking Austin with a few more right hands. Austin looks to grab a chair, Shane takes it away and he throws it at Rock. Austin stops the challenger from using the weapon, however he's not able to stop Rocky throwing him over the barricade and into the front row. Rock continues to lay the smackdown on Austin in the crowd including a clothesline and a low blow before Shane politely encourages Rocky to get the fight back in the ring. Austin gets thrown back to ringside and now he's on top of the English commentary table. Rock takes this opportunity to grab a camera before he joins Austin atop the table and we then get one of the most iconic moments of this whole Rock and Austin rivalry. Rocky points the camera at a downed rattlesnake while flipping him off and talking trash. He then pans to the crowd before he turns back to Austin. Stone Cold's now standing right in front of the Great One, Double Bird held aloft and Austin delivers a Stone Cold stunner on the table. Absolutely brilliant stuff. 
The two men eventually get back to their feet and find themselves back inside the ring. Austin looks for a stunner but Rock counters and he sends the champion crashing into Shane. JR screams that Austin taking out the referee was inadvertent all while Austin turns right into a rock bottom in the center of the ring. Shane places Rocky's arm over Austin, he makes the count but the champion is able to kick out at two. A frustrated Shane then grabs the WWF title belt and he looks to wipe Austin out. But his plan backfires as Austin moves out of the way and the rock gets clobbered by mistake. This would turn out to be a very costly misstep for the corporation. Austin makes the cover, Shane counts, one, two, and then he flips the champion off before scurrying away out of the ring, bringing back memories from last year's Survivor Series. But unlike Survivor Series, Vince McMahon shows up with the smoking skull belt and he lays Shane out with it on the entranceway. Earl Hebner takes over referee duties and Rock gets a long two count from the new official. Rock then grabs the WWF title belt looking to deliver a kill shot, but Austin counters with a stunner and it's he who connects with gold right to the head of the the great one. Stone Cold Steve Austin wins at Backlash and he retains the WWF Championship in the process. Austin celebrates in the ring and Vince even tosses the smoking skull belt back before taking his leave. The rattlesnake raises both belts above his head and the crowd goes absolutely wild. We then cut to the parking lot where the ministry approached Stephanie's limo. The cops tell the driver to step on it and get little Miss McMahon out of here. Stephanie tells the driver to stop and wait for Vince, but… Where to, Stephanie? <laughs> it's bloody wonderful stuff. I played this back at least 10 times. Back in the arena, Vince is completely unaware of what just happened as he watches Austin celebrate in the ring. Backlash fades to black, and there you go. Another pay per view of the Monday Night War completed. When people mention Backlash 1999, they usually say it's the show that WrestleMania should have been. And while I do agree with that to a certain extent, I think this event only gets the praise it does because it's compared to what was a thoroughly underwhelming mania, you know? If we look at this pay per view on its own, it's nowhere near the WWF's best offering. Yes, the main event is fantastic and it tops the two men's WrestleMania encounter, which was the only real standout on that card, but the rest of Backlash doesn't really have that much to make it stand out. The hardcore title match was some silly fun and the Goldust vs Godfather match was okay, but the X-Pac vs Triple H match got bogged down with its lengthy runtime. the number one contendership tag match followed the usual New Age Outlaws formula, and Undertaker vs Shamrock is one of the worst matches of the WWF pay per view calendar so far this year. Was it better than WCW Spring Stampede? Honestly, I don't think it was. Apart from one match that you could skip, Spring Stampede arguably over delivered and despite having a rough few months, it proved that WCW was still capable of putting on good events. Backlash has too many lulls for me to recommend the entire show, but if you're gonna check out just one match from this pay per view, it would have to be the main event. Join me on Thursday for Reliving the War to see where The Undertaker took Stephanie, how Shane and The Rock are going to respond to losing in the title rematch, and how Vince is going to react to finding out his daughter was taken hostage right under his nose. Thank you all so much for watching another pay-per-view on this Reliving the War journey, and as always, take care.